In the past, we've dealt with arithmetic sequences. Um, that's when there's adding between each term. Uh, and now we're going to deal with geometric sequences um, because they're really exponential functions, and that's what we've been doing. So a geometric sequence basically means there's multiplying between each term. Um, and each between each term, it's multiplying by the same constant, which we call r, the common ratio. Okay, we give it that letter r, and we call it the common ratio. Uh, so here I have a very general geometric sequence, 1, 5, 25, 1, 25. As you can tell, it's not being added by the same amount in, in between, so there is no common difference, is what we call the, the arithmetic sequences. So now it's a geometric sequence, because in this case, I am multiplying by 5 between each term. And to come up, so that's my common ratio. In this case, my common ratio would be 5. My common ratio that's what we call R, would be 5. And to come up with that common ratio in any geometric sequence, all you take is a term divided by the term previous. So for example, if I look at 25 and 5, I just divide by the term and the term previous. So 25 to 5. We divide them, and we come up with 5. So we know that it's times 5 going to the next term. Now you kind of just do the inverse operation there. So that's how you come up with that common ratio. You just divide one term divided by its previous term. And I could use any term. So when I check these, I should check it for each situation. So I should have done 5 divided by 1. Good. 25 divided by 5. Good. 125 divided by 25 which is 5. So I know the common difference, or my common ratio is 5. Okay, it has to work for each, between each term. So my first situation, I want to decide whether it's in an arithmetic, a geometric, or neither. So if it's arithmetic, that means it's adding by a common difference. If it's geometric, that means it's multiplying by a common ratio. If it's neither, then there's no pattern. There's no pattern in between there. I always check to see if it's arithmetic right away. That's my first, my first thing I always look for. So look at this first situation. Going from 0 to 8, it's a plus 8. From 8 to 16, it's plus 8. From 16 to 24, it's plus 8. All right, there we go. So I know this one is an arithmetic sequence, and that its common difference would be 8. So that's what it means by explain. Tell me what the common difference is. It's adding by 8. So that's why I know it's arithmetic. Looking at the next situation, I'm going to check addition first. Well, it's adding by a negative 16 here, or a minus 16. Here it's going down 12. Now it's going down 9. Okay, that's not, it's not consistent, right? There's no pattern there. So I know it's not arithmetic. Now I'm going to check multiplication, check my geometric. Well, I take one term divided by the one previous, right? So 48 divided by 64. And I just want to simplify that as a fraction, in which I get 3 fourths. Try the next one. 36 divided by 48. 3 fourths. Good. And the next one. 27 divided by 36. I get 3 fourths. So it looks like we got a pattern there. Going from one term to the next, we're multiplying by 3 fourths. So I would say it's geometric because we're multiplying between each term. Oh, there's a T and a P in there. Geometric, and to explain, I'd say its common ratio is 3 fourths. So I could say common ratio is 3 fourths. I could say R equals 3 fourths. I could say that's being multiplied by 3 fourths between each term. Um, yes. So there you go. So I want to know what it's being multiplied between each one. And I check that by dividing. Um, one term divided by its previous term. So now let's take just geometric sequences, uh, and let's find the next three terms. Uh, to do that, we got to find what the common ratio is. So to check what the common ratio is, we take one term and divide by the previous. So negative 8 divided by 1. Negative 8. And I'm going to just check one more just to be safe. 
64 divided by negative 8. Good, negative 8. So r equals negative 8. So I just take my term negative 5, 12, and I multiply by negative 8. So I'm take this times negative 8, and I get 4,096. And then I'm going to take that times negative 8, and I get negative 32,768. And I'll take that times negative 8. 262,144. So those are my next three terms of this sequence, geometric sequence. So find what you're multiplying by between each, and then just continue to do your path. So here, geometric sequence to check. Take the term divided by the previous term. In this case, I get 1 half. I'm going to check one more just to be safe. 10 divided by 20, 1 half. So it looks like we're multiplying by 1 half, or my common ratio is 1 half. R equals 1 half. So I'm going to keep multiplying by 0.5 or 1 half. Well, half of 5 is 2.5, or I could write it as a fraction. Preferably, let's just keep it as fractions. So 5 over 2, or um, 2 and a half. Keep dividing that by half, so I got 5 over 4. And multiply that by half, 5 over 6. So 5, 6. So just keep multiplying by 1 half to get your next three terms there. Okay, and just like um, arithmetic sequences, if you remember, we had a, uh, a formula for arithmetic sequences to find any term of the sequence. Remember to find any term, the nth term. We took the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. Okay, we got the same type of thing for a geometric sequence, we can use it, uh, a formula to find any term of my sequence. Um, and let's look at my last example here. I'm going to use this last example now, 40, 20, 10, 5. 40, 20, 10, 5. So basically what happens is it starts with your first term. Here's my first term in position 1, right? It's the, the first term, the nth term is 1. And a sub n, so a sub 1, this would be my first term, is 40. Okay, so if I think about that, to get to 20, what happens? We multiply by the common ratio, right? We multiply by the common ratio. That's where that a sub 1 times r is. The first term times the common ratio, okay? Well, to get to the next one, I multiply, right, I, multiply by, I multiply by another 1 half, don't I? So to get to the, the next one, to get to 10, I multiply by another 1 half. Or really, it's 1 half to the second power. 1 half times 1 half. So this would give me 20. If I took 40 times 1 half to the second power, I would get 10. Okay, so on and so forth. So really what's happening is I take the first term, take the first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. So if I think about this, if I want to find the first one, it's just the first term, right? If I want to find the second term, I take the first term times r to the first power, right? Because here's 2 is n, so 2 minus 1, n minus 1. Here n is 3, so 3 minus 1 gives me 2, so I take r to the second power. Um, so in this case, to find the nth term, I would take the first term times r to the n minus 1 power, or in this case, the first term was 40, and I take it times 1 half to the n minus 1 power. Okay, so let's, let's write an equation for uh, the nth term of the geometric sequence. And to do that, we just talk about it. We take the first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. So in this case, I take negative 6, that's the first term. To find the common ratio, we take one term and divide it by the one previous. So 12 divided by negative 6, and we get negative 2. So we're multiplying by negative 2 between each term. So r equals negative 2. So that's my r, n to the n minus 1 power. So there's my equation. All you have to do is plug it in. Plug in your first term and plug in the common ratio. Well, it tells me now to find the 12th term of the sequence. So I just plug in 12 for n. 
I'm going to find the 12th term. So negative 6 times negative 2 to the 11th power, right? 12 minus 1. So I take negative 2 to the 11th power, which is negative 2048. And take that times negative 6. So the 12th term, if I would keep going, would be 12,288. So there is the 12th term. And let's do one more example here. So let's write my equation. A sub n equals first term, 96, times the common ratio. Well, take 1 and divide it by the one previous to find your common ratio, 24 over 48. Looks like 1 half, so 1 half to the n minus 1 power. And then it wants us to find the 12th term. So I take 96 times 1 half to the 11th power. So 1 half again to the 11th power. And that times 96 to give us, so the 12th term would be, and this one I could uh, leave as a fraction, 3 over 64. Or if you want to write it as a decimal, it's approximately 0 0.05. And there we go. So you're just basically finding the common ratio and plug in your information into the formula. Okay, that's all I got. Hope you enjoyed the video. Deuces.